job, why were you attracted to Nebraska? Yeah, you know, Nebraska, I think, speaks for itself. The Big Ten, you know, the opportunity. You know, first off, let me, let me say that, you know, my family and I were really, really comfortable at South Alabama. Richie Riley, who I worked for for the past four years, is one of my best friends, unbelievable coach, unbelievable person, has treated my family uh, as good as, you know, I've, I've been around. Uh, so we were comfortable, and it was going to be it was going to be hard for me to leave. Um, but just Nebraska, the Big Ten. Obviously, you see they get nine teams in the NCAA tournament. You're coming from a place in a in a, a mid major level where it's a one bid league, and you know you got 14 teams in the Sun Belt. It's hard. You know every night is tough. So uh, the opportunity to be at a place like Nebraska, where you have a national brand, an unbelievable fan base, and then to work alongside someone like Fred Hoiberg was just it was an opportunity. That, you know, uh, I was I've been hoping for, looking for, and, and excited about. Could you maybe sense? Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, I've always kind of tried to just be where my feet are, and, and but you know, you maintain those relationships. You know, it wasn't something that uh, you know, coach and I were talking, you know, on a weekly basis, daily basis, or anything. But you know, we maintain, you know, in contact as as I did with you know Nate and Gates and the rest of the staff, and and those are just guys like coach said that I've been connected to and known for a long time. So um, yeah, you know, um, it was it was one of the situations and places that I felt that if I got the opportunity to. You know, my family and I would take a take a strong look. I'm from Kentucky. I've been in the South. You know, a majority of my of my career. My wife is from Louisiana. Uh, her whole family is there. So this is a little bit different for all of us, but we're excited about it. And uh, and and um, you know, throughout the process, she was she was on board with it as well, which is very very important to me. Who was instrumental to you coming up as a coach, and where you kind of gained some of your your knowledge from? Yeah. So I grew up in Kentucky, like I said, where basketball is just. I mean, it's the thing. You know. I grew up in the eastern part of the state, uh, played at the all-time winningest high school in the state of Kentucky. Uh, Mike Flynn was my high school coach. Uh, he was there all the way from when I was in grade school to, to high school, went to his camps. Uh, he's, you know, certainly a mentor and a, and a great friend of mine uh, that I, was at my wedding, you know, and so we, we maintain uh, a great relationship. Darren Horn, who I played for at Western Kentucky, um, you know, we spoke yesterday and he's, you know, uh, Excited that Gates and I are together. You know, it's kind of come full circle. He coached me. He was a GA. Uh, so, um, you know, and then just, you know, everybody I've worked with, you know, everybody I worked for, you know, still stay in contact with. And, uh, uh, you know, very appreciative for everybody that's poured, poured into me throughout my career. What are the hallmarks of your defensive philosophy? And what kind of picture should fans expect of what you're going to bring to the table? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, very comfortable on that side of the ball. You know, it's been a, it's been a, uh, you know, uh, something that I've tried, to, I've had to do, you know, a lot of places. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the biggest thing is just finding out what, you know, is the best fit for here, you know, for coach, for the staff, for our players, and then just try to build it from there, you know. But, uh, um, you know, I've, we've, we've played a lot of zone everywhere I've been. You know, this past year, I had an opportunity to work with uh, Rodney Crawford, who was an assistant for us at South Alabama. He's got an unbelievable man-to-man -man background, one of the best man-to-man -man coaches, and we kind of, you know, three quarters of the year, we played a lot of man-to-man, -man, played a lot of zone with that, so I got to learn from him and, and uh, some of the philosophies that Nate and I would talk about, you know, in the preseason on Zooms, you know, and, and just discuss basketball, some NBA trends. We implemented in the you know, our man-to-man -man stuff this past year. So, again, it all comes down to, you know, what coach is comfortable with, what's best for our players, uh, and, and what gives us the best chance to win. But, um, you know, like the three-quarter court pressure, like the full court pressure, uh, like to extend the zone a little bit. And, and, you know, some of the reasons why zone's been successful is, you know, like coach said, if you get the right team with the length uh, that keeps it out of the lane, it, it, it suffocates them a little bit. And then you don't foul. You keep your best players on the floor. They don't get a lot of paint touches, and, and uh, if you can rebound out of it, you know, make a miss first shot, you'll have a chance to be successful. So how do you feel like your defense of the boss, I mean, like you said, with everything you've learned, how do you feel like that, has, that can have an immediate impact on when you work with the guys? Yeah, yeah. So, again, it just comes down to, you know, what, it, what everybody's comfortable with, you know, uh, what, what coaches is, is uh, you know, comfortable with, what Nate is comfortable with. I know everybody on our staff, you know, Coach Gates has got his own background you know, from working at Northwestern. So it's just it's just finding the right blend of what works, you know, how long we stay in zone. I mean, you can go from zone to man, you know, in the same possession, uh, you know, or, if, you know, you need to jump from man to zone. I mean, there's just a lot of things that you can do. But, you know, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, just instilling a mentality in the guys that, you know, uh, the defense travels, you know, sometimes shots don't always fall, you know, and sometimes you got to believe you can win, you know, on the road when you're, you know, when you're not having your best offense tonight. Walker returning, but how, how does that kind of help you from like having a player to 
that really that really emphasizes defense and so yeah, you know, so I'm excited about Derek and, 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 and glad he decided to come back. You know, I think Derek's a, a guy that is a, a leader on this team, and those guys are usually your best communicators and best talkers. And having him in the middle of the zone, you know, would be really, really instrumental. You know, those guys have to talk, and uh, the zone, the back line of the zone are, are uh, you know, primarily the most important pieces in the whole deal. And, and just a physical presence, a guy that brings a ton of experience and a veteran guy that knows how to win at this level. Yeah, so I think just, you know, as a recruiter, you know, again, you, it's, it all, it's just like the, the defensive philosophy, offensive philosophy. You just have to find, you know, what your team needs, what's best for, you know, each specific year. I mean, there's so much turnover and so much change year to year. You know, managing a roster is really important, uh, you know, everywhere. But, uh, you know, obviously, you know, in the fall, you, in summer and fall, you get a chance to go out and see a lot of high school kids, you know, sign some high school kids early. And in the spring and, you know, late till, you know, summer school, you, you're trying to fill your roster with the needs. And maybe it's a, maybe it's a late – High school kid, where there's a coaching change, you didn't get in the first go around, and and now he's, you know, you get in the second go around, or you know, this time of the year it's you know, heavy transfers. You know, everybody's focused on that. You know, and again, working for Richie Riley, I mean, he's been he's been a head coach for six years. You know, I think he's taken like 27 transfers or something. So it's been a big part of who he was, and Richie's a mentor of mine, and it's, it's a big part of who we were. We had seven Division One transfers on our roster this past season at South Alabama. And we had guys from TCU, Memphis, LSU, uh, two from, uh, from Auburn, uh, Texas A&M, BMI. So, you know, again, you just, you know, you gotta be, you gotta work hard. You gotta turn over every rock. And, and it, it helps being at a place like this. If you can just get kids to campus and you see the facilities, I mean, you guys, you guys know, it's just, it's again, part of what attracted, you know, me here is, you know, in, in recruiting, you got to have places, you got to have buildings that look like what we have here in place. And so this is a special place. You just got to work hard to, to get them to campus, and, and then everything else pretty much sells itself. Trey McGowan has a decision to make, obviously, the president's saying, but have you looked at him as a defensive acumen and how it might fit your plan? Yeah, no, yeah, Trey's a, he's an unbelievable athlete. He's got unbelievable feet. Uh, his ability to not get screened, his really ability to pressure and bother the ball, and which is, you know, if you can get, you know, teams to start their, 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 their point of attack, you know, a little further. Trey's got the ability to do that, really jam the ball. And, and so he's, uh, you know, he's a special defender. He had some really, really tough assignments night in and night out in this league. Uh, as you know, um, you guys know better than I do, but uh, the talent at, at this level in this league this past year, were, and m most nights out, Trey, Trey had the best, you know, assignment when he was healthy and, and back playing. So, uh, he, yeah, he can really help us defensively. You know, Trey's a very well-rounded player and, and um, you know, looking forward to see what happens with him in the future. As a coach, is there an adjustment that has to be made coming from, you know, the Sun Belt to the Big Ten? You know, your players talk about transferring up and things like that. But is there, as a coach, are there things you have to change or no, I just think you just have to, you know, like coach that build relationships with these guys, you know, get them to trust you and, and, and uh, you know, make sure that they understand that, you know, it, there's a system in place and it, and it works. You just have to trust it and buy in and you have to build relationships with them. You have to do that through the film room. You have to do that through being on the floor with them and sweating. And uh, today was a, was a great step in that for me. And, and I'm excited about, you know, doing that. And again, it's, it's, a, it's going to be about what's best for coach and, and, and everybody having a part of it. But, uh, um, you know, I'm excited to learn from Nate. I'm excited to be back with Gates and his energy and and uh, and we're all going to figure this thing out together. What's your philosophy on the balance between uh, recruiting transfers and, and the four year guys? Yeah, and, and again, it's just it kind of depends on what you're losing, you know, you know, I think you kind of try to position yourself with with guys that, uh, you know, your upperclassmen, if they're leaving, if you can find a, a young guy, if, if a guy has, you know, is a, he's going to be back for two more years and you don't want to try to find a position, a guy at his position to come in and, and play behind him and compete against him year in and year out. But it's just, it's about balancing the roster. I mean, I don't think you want to try to sign, you know, eight or nine guys each year. So just trying to figure out, you know, who's in place and, and uh, how many years they have left and, and uh, just kind of go from there. Of course, when we were talking about like that, bringing that, um, that size to the position. So um, the 
that kind of something you've been t- you've been targeting so far as well as recruiting just with the guys the size these positions? Yeah, you know, I think at this level, you know, there's there's unbelievable, you know, uh, positional size each each night out in the Big Ten, and so just having to find those guys, man, whether it's you know offensively, defensively, obviously, you know, the length will help defensively. Uh, you know, rebounding and all that, and then just you know, the way coach wants to play, having guys get a piece of the paint, get those high percentage shots at the rim. You know, size helps with that as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think the bigger you can be, you know, would definitely help a lot of time in, in in most cases. But again, it'll just be trying to you know find you know the right pieces and the right right fits for everything. What did you learn from the experience you went through at Southern Miss and Tennessee and fall out from all that? Yeah, you know, um, it, you know, the one thing I am. One thing I'll say about it, man, is you know it's it's well documented everything that happened. The one thing I am uh, I, I took from it is you know my relationships on every campus that I've been at you know have allowed me to get back. You know this is the third time I've been hired since then, and and you know I think the way you treat people on a day-to-day basis, who you're with in those offices, uh, you know across campus, not just in the basketball. You know myself, my family, we're department people. You know we're for everywhere we've ever been. South Alabama, we would go to. We'd go to women's games, we'd go to baseball games, softball games, you know, and so my family's around campus a lot. They're on they're at the gym, you know, and so the relationships I think that you that you that you take away from everywhere you be everywhere you are is what allows you to have your next opportunities and, and moving forward. So really proud of, you know, the relationships I maintain and the people that I got to know every place I've ever been.